coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned. Aerial Vehicle Operator Warrant Officer Specialty became a reality. Also, my EPA hydrogen fuel cell driven high 4 has flown. And DJI counts more than 500 people rescued by drones around the world. Welcome to Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. Hi, I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. We have a packed episode today filled with the latest news, so let's start with the Navy announces Aerial Vehicle Operator Warrant Officer Specialty. The Navy announced a new Warrant Officer Specialty designator whose job will be to operate carrier-based MQ-25 Stingray unmanned aerial vehicles, which are expected to start appearing in the Fleet Carrier Air Wing sometime in 2024. The establishment of Aerial Vehicle Operator Warrant Officer Specialty became a reality on December 9th with Secretary of the Navy Kenneth Braithwaite's approval of the new designator. Over the next six to ten years, the Navy will recruit, train, and send to the fleet a community of roughly 450 warrants in grades W1 through W5. Those selected for the program will complete officer candidate school in Newport. Upon graduation, they will be designated as Warrant Officer 1 and must complete basic flight training as well as advanced training on the MQ-25 aerial vehicle. Once complete with basic training, these officers will earn their own distinctive Navy Wings of Gold Warfare device and be assigned to the 737X designator. And though right now the community will be focused on the MQ-25, in the future, Warrant Officer AVOs may also operate MQ-4C Triton while on shore duty following their initial MQ-25C tour. As the Navy's footprint in unmanned aerial vehicles increases, so could the scope of the AVO community. Coming up after the break, new drone advocacy group has launched. We'll have those details after the break. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Skyleader Aircraft offers a lineup of the most powerful, durable, and efficient light sport aircraft in the industry. From trainers to roomy cockpits for long hauls, Skyleader has an aircraft for you. And the best part? They're in your budget. Skyleader's base prices are set low to give you room to customize your aircraft to your needs, desires, and wallet, allowing you to put your money where it matters to you most. Visit FlySkyleader.com today to learn about our aircraft, customization options, and chat with the team. Swift Fuels proudly introduces the Forever Avgas STC. One simple upfront purchase entitles the Forever STC certificate holder to receive all current and future Avgas STCs that the FAA issues to Swift Fuels. The best part? It's priced today at only $100, and the prepaid certificate never expires. Get your Forever Avgas STC today at SwiftFuelsAvgas.com. Welcome back. In the next Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at a few shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. Check this out. Ampere conducts first airline flight trials. Ampere is reportedly the first to complete a demonstration flight of a hybrid electric aircraft along with an actual airline route. The company flew its electric EEL aircraft on a 20-minute flight from Maui's Kahului Airport across the island to Hana and back on a single charge. Ampere is now flying the route regularly in a one-month demonstration program. It is the first use of a hybrid electric aircraft under the FAA's Experimental Market Survey category and is another technology with great potential for the unmanned market. Fleur Systems acquires Altavian. Fleur System has acquired Altavian, a Gainesville, Florida manufacturer of SUAS for defense and public safety customers. Altavian UAS users are provided with decision support and intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance capability, thanks to Altavian's airframes integrating multiple sensors, including Fleur Thermal technology. Founded in 2011, Altavian designs and manufactures Group 1 UAS platforms for long or short-range operations. 
AMA works with Congress to secure educational protection for UAS operations. The National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2021 has been passed by the House and is expected to be passed by the Senate soon. AMA successfully got an educational provision written into the act, which permits operations as part of an educational program that is chartered by a recognized community-based organization. University-level UAS operations, such as University Model Aviation Student Clubs, will continue to be permitted within CBO programming or as a standalone UAS program. New Drone Advocacy Group has launched. The Drone Service Providers Alliance, a drone industry trade association, has formally launched. Founded by two drone industry veterans, the DSPA aims to represent small and medium-sized drone service providers' interest before the FAA, industry standard groups, and to educate governments about the perspective of drone service providers. The DSPA looks to provide resources to member businesses to help them grow, manage risk, and become advocates and stewards of the industry. That was our Unmanned Minute. Now let's return to the rest of the news. The Maepa Consortium has confirmed the successful proving flight of a fascinating technology aboard the Hi-4 aircraft. In November of this year, the Hi-4 hydrogen-powered hybrid electric aircraft successfully flew from Maribor Airport in Slovenia, demonstrating capabilities with immense potential for the unmanned aviation segment. By demonstrating technologies and showcasing that long endurance and safe zero-emission flights are possible, Maepa reports that they are creating the technological foundation to enable clean, quiet, safe, and sustainable flight, making Europe Green Deal's goals related to aviation one step closer to reality. With the renovated and optimized fuel cell system technology developed by Maepa and in cooperation with multiple national projects, the Hi-4 became the most powerful hydrogen fuel cell driven aircraft ever made. First, qualification tests and data dissemination show that the fully redundant Hi-4 powertrain architecture allows an upscaling for the modular technology. After these messages, one company is celebrating a huge milestone for how many rescues they've done so far. I'll tell you which one after the break. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher, or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. NLT is just another tick on your pre-flight checklist until you need it. Did you ever wonder what would happen if you had an engine failure over the mountains, marshland, or other dangerous terrain? Take to the skies confidently with the most reliable and highest performing ELTs and safety products on board that instantly mobilized life-saving search and rescue across the world. Read survivor stories from aviators and adventurers who survived life-threatening encounters thanks to ACR and Artec's life-saving technology. Luck favors the prepared at SurvivorClub.com. I believe that if people use the Landing Doctor Training Program, they will have less accidents and eventually their insurance will go down and they will make a superior pilot. We do personal limitation checklists, which is the most important reason you need to fly with limits. We do ground proximity awareness training, and we do this with a crosswind. We've been operating six Prestels for two years without one insurance claim. The Landing Doctor program is working, and you're gonna hear more about it. Welcome back. DJI counts more than 500 people rescued by drones around the world. You heard that right, more than 500 people around the world have been rescued from danger by drones, according to new statistics collected by DGI. This milestone came in mid-October when sheriff deputies used a DGI drone with thermal imaging camera to find a missing 93-year-old woman in a dark field in Missouri. Thermal video from the rescue released by the Cass County Sheriff's Office shows how the drone spotted Chris Fairchild as a bright yellow dot in the darkness. Fairchild's rescue was one of several recent drone rescues around the world that helped propel the global count above 500. 
in Split, Croatia on September 30th. The Croatian Mountain Rescue Service completed Rescue 494 when it learned of a man who had threatened to kill himself and left home and used their DJI Mavic 2 Enterprise Duel to find him sitting on the edge of a breakwater. DJI lists rescues from around the world on the DJI drone rescue map, which tracks more than 300 incidents when police, firefighters, rescue squads, and bystanders have used drones to save people from danger since the first known rescue in 2013. Drones have found missing people in darkness, help rescuers plot paths out of hazardous terrain, brought life preservers to people struggling in water, and delivered supplies to stranded people. Well, that does it for our show today. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. You can also catch us on Roku and Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne in the directory. We are currently operating on our winter schedule, which means we are streamed. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We hope you enjoy the show. We'll see you next time.